Hey everyone, day number 293 on the Skylark build. Uh, it's coming along. Just gonna give you guys a quick little update on everything and show you some things that's been going on with it. So shifters mounted, starting to get some of the wiring in, building a custom dash to kind of smooth back in everything and then mount the holly dash in here and getting some of the water line ran up through the car, some of the wiring's in over here and so at the end of the last video we talked about how the hood clearance and everything was going to be rough with the intake so we ended up getting a new intake <laughs> all billet frankenstein engine dynamics intake this thing is really badass it's a really nice intake ended up taking the holly um, throttle body and flipping it over and it should work i think i've seen people do this and then we'll just mount the sensors here and wire over to here so it shouldn't be a problem but we'll gain some room there because otherwise the little top of the throttle body was going to hit and be outside of the hood uh, ended up getting the intercoolers so you guys can kind of see the intercoolers are semi mounted in here and ended up getting a donut to create this aluminum piping over so that's what fumble over there is working on right now <laughs> and then got the wastegates all mounted up so it's right here and then the wastegate will sit right here um, and then probably just dump it out wherever. Ended up lowering the radiator to allow for the intake tubes. But as you guys can see with this new intake, it is right, right there. Right somewhere. So super close. <laughs> and uh, something that to gain every little ounce of room for the intercooler, as you guys can see, you built like a little jig to hold the intercooler up, but coming out of here, you got a big 12 like AN fitting too, so it's gonna actually be a little bit lower. So trying to get the intercooler as far up into the car as we could, you ended up cutting it off. <laughs> you ended up cutting the intercooler, like the little necks on the intercooler, as you guys I've can see right there. I've cut my necks, I've cut my turbos. So cut everything to try to get it in, All right? So Don't instead, of, instead of running, Rubber coupler, rubber coupler, rubber coupler, rubber coupler. Uh, ended up just doing welding onto the uh, turbos here, just putting the V-bands on it. So it'll be V-banded everywhere. And then you're gonna have like a little slip joint here and here to let everything kind of move. And then a rubber coupler to tie to the motor. And that'll be the only one on the car. So should come out pretty nice. But that was, ended up gaining, trying to get every ounce of every inch that we could get off of here yeah to replace it for with the with the v-bands because they have the they have a little neck on them that's probably that's, uh, that's about eight inch taller than that yeah so it doesn't gain a huge amount but just trying to do well still gain everything you can on it and because more of a positive connector yeah and then you're getting away from all the rubber couplers and everything the down pipes are all built mounted and then uh, still have to. You have the bungs in here already for those two sensors. Yep, they're right on the on the back side. On the back side, they're right there where they go over the frame rail. So if you crawl on your back, you can see it. But I know you might get dirty. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get dirty. Don't want to get dirty. All right, so here's the intercooler, and you can see where just cut it and put the V bands on there. So this is part of a donut, an aluminum donut to get real tight fits. Uh, Not you sugar. Ended up doing that. So gain as much as you could coming out of the fender and not having to cut it as much. So as you guys can see, you start getting really tight with some of your tubing and everything. So that's where you can see it gets really tight right up in here. So you even had to start cutting more of the inner fender to get the clearance over for it. Um, and if you would have had a clearance even more and starting to get into the actual fender, if using regular tubing, like regular 90 degree aluminum bins. Or keep the inner cooler out the bottom of the car. Right, or the intercooler is going to sit so far below the car that then it becomes an issue that you could possibly catch the water lines. You don't want to catch a water line in front of tires. So here's some other stuff that's been done. So as you guys can see, the wiring in the back of the car is starting to come together. So this will be, this little switch here is to run the water pump so you can drain out the ice and water out of here when you get done making a pass to get all the water out of it. And then this toggle switch here will be down will be the small pump and then up will be the big pump 
So then we can turn on the little street pump to drive on or the big pump when we're racing. So we'll just come back here and flip a switch and be on the big pump. And then we'll have the ball valves that I showed you guys last time right there. But now everything's ran as far as like the hoses, uh, vent, all that's done. So we're really starting to come together, starting to get some of the wiring put together on it. And then the interior is starting to come together as well. Ended up getting the first piece of the finished interior in. It's a real nice headliner. Came together really nice. Kind of incorporate the, the blue paint that's on the car right now into the car. And then the dash is going to be, you're going to do the dash in two-tone, right? So gray and then blue uh, to help draw that into the car and too. I have a blue that matches. Matches the headliner? Yeah, I went down and had them color match my... Oh, that's right. My... Uh, headliner, yeah, so that'll be from the to it. thing down. So I have that steering column. We're going to cover the dash with the same material. Eddie, Eddie, yeah, little insert. So this doing a great job. Yeah, so Eddie's going to cover that for us in the same material. So it won't be all metal. It'll have a little bit of the help tie it together. Yeah, something help break it. Kind of finish it around the holly dash sitting in there. And then that's what we're looking at too is on the holly dash if we want to make it to work and kind of tilt back and forth just a little bit uh, so you can kind of adjust it to whoever's driving the car. All right, so we also got the drive shaft sensor mounted. It's a motion research deal that we will tie back into the holly for like traction control or whatever. We can watch speed and watch slip and all that, but we're probably gonna end up tying it in and possibly using some of, uh, possibly the like the dot plot in the new V5 Holly software. You got the Aeromotive fuel filter mounted. Ended up having to make our own little mount. It's actually using stainless uh, tubing, like uh, exhaust tubing, and ended up making a little clamp to mount it up in here. So everything's starting to get plumbed up to the front of the car and some of the wiring headed that way too and then get everything terminated once we're up front. All right everyone, so that's it for the update on the build and we'll be ringing you more soon. Hopefully I'll start doing a couple more like quick smaller videos for you guys. Uh, let me know what you think below. You like the longer format with more information or the quicker updates? We'll see you guys soon.